everyone. Deafening Silence ASMR here, and welcome to I Have More Money Than You, the 2020 edition, where in one of the biggest money flexes in gaming history, if not the biggest, Microsoft purchases ZeniMax Media, who are the owners of Bethesda Softworks, the company responsible for the Elder Scrolls franchise, for seven point six billion with a B dollars. This is a big undertaking and even though I haven't really done like gaming news or anything like that on this channel or any of my other channels, I wanted to talk about this because this is a big deal and it's very important to me being an Elder Scrolls fan. Now first let's go over some of the details about this situation. Microsoft as I mentioned purchased ZeniMax Media. ZeniMax Media owns companies such as Bethesda Softworks, which I mentioned, but they also own id Software, Arcane, uh, Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog, and Machine Games, just to name, well, pretty much most of them, but there's a couple others in there. And if you're not familiar with those companies, you might be familiar with their IPs, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Wolfenstein, Quake, um, Starfield, which is going to be coming out soon, hopefully, Doom. Uh, Dishonored and a couple of others in there. What we know is that these games and subsequent games that'll be coming down the line will be added to Xbox's um, Game Pass that they're doing right now, which is a huge deal, and we'll get into more of that later. Microsoft is going to jump from 15 studio teams, creative studio teams working on games and such, uh, to 23. Big number. And at this time, no official announcements have been made regarding exclusive titles to Xbox or PC. And Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, as we know it right now, will still be ex exclusive to PlayStation as a timed console exclusive, which was the original plan from uh, ZeniMax uh, pr previous to this purchase. Microsoft, as you may also be familiar with, owns big series already such as Minecraft, when they purchased Majango, uh, Battletoads, the Killer Instinct series, Age of Empires, that's a big one, and Psychonauts, just to name a few. So there are, they're adding a bunch of big titles to an already kind of increasing repertoire for them that they own. And as stated by Todd Howard, the new resources and tech opportunities will allow Bethesda to push Elder Scrolls and the other titles into the next generation with better graphics, better game engines, and more. Now, those are some of the details that we know right now. Uh, there's a lot of speculation out there right now, and I'm here to add some thoughts and opinions to that speculation. Uh, number one, the reason why I think maybe that this purchase happened um, because it's a big deal and it wasn't even really talked about. There was no rumors going around or anything saying, hey, Microsoft is looking to purchase them. Um, Microsoft has kind of been in the game for the past couple of years buying up studios, so their names are, are always going to be thrown around. But there wasn't, um, hey, I've got news, Microsoft is officially looking to purchase them. So Bethesda and to a higher degree, ZeniMax may have been in financial trouble. Can't say that for certain, but the reason I say this is because Bethesda, a time before, back in the 90s, was facing, facing financial trouble. They were looking to potentially declare bankruptcy. Elder Scrolls, Battlespire, and Red Guard did horribly in sales and reception. And so they were looking to potentially go under. And it was thanks to them making Morrowind and putting all their time and effort into that that they kind of pulled their fat out of the fire. And then, of course, Fallout did good. Elder Scrolls, Oblivion, and Skyrim came out. And that really pushed them, you know, way out of the red and into the black, so to speak. But uh, as years have went on, there's been no new Elder Scrolls Six, even though it was announced two years ago um, and came out. There's been Elder Scrolls Online, which a lot of fans like myself aren't interested in that game. I played it for a month, 
put it down and said, if I'm going to play an MMORPG, I'm going to play The Old Republic. That's, I love Star Wars, and I'm not a World of Warcraft fan, and I was seeing people coming from World of Warcraft to play it. So, as an Elder Scrolls fan, I'm not playing that game. The constant pushing of Skyrim on multiple consoles kind of ruffled some people's feathers. It's getting long in the tooth. They're wearing out their welcome with that game. It's nearly a decade old now. Next November will be 10 years exactly. Constant promotion of Elder Scrolls Online is pushing people away. No Elder Scrolls 6 is getting people frustrated. Skyrim's getting people frustrated, even though the memes are great. And so, to add to that, Fallout 4 did lackluster as far as the fan perception of it. It wasn't as good as Fallout 3. I've not played the franchise, but I know that much about it. And then, of course, Fallout 76. If you know anything about that, you know that wasn't a good... Uh, marketing or gaming experience for anybody. So all these things have definitely hurt Bethesda's media rep, so to speak, um, perception among fans, but it also could have hurt them financially, not to mention the coronavirus pandemic going on right now. Less people are buying games, probably there's no telling how many people canceled um, monthly subscriptions to Elder Scrolls Online, and you know, you just have to think that they have suffered in sales. If it was enough to spur this buyout by Microsoft, I don't know, but that's speculation. So, one of the other possible things to come out of this that has people speculating is it could mean a big game is coming for the launch of the Xbox. Um, I talked with the ASMR nerd on Twitter, um, seeing if he was going to do a video about this because he's a big Bethesda fan. And, uh, Several of us, I guess, convinced him to do it, and um, he asked me to put my thoughts out as well. So here I am doing a video, but he said this, and I'm repeating it. Yeah, no coincidence that they're announcing the purchase of Bethesda and adding Zenimax in their portfolio as well to potentially the Xbox, right as Xbox pre-orders are fixing to come out. That's a big deal. But why announce this purchase if you're not going to have games from them to go along with it? it? It could spur people along to go ahead and purchase it because they know this is coming. But uh, Microsoft is definitely going to want some big titles, possibly some big exclusive titles, to power the Xbox, similar to what Sony has for the PlayStation. I mean, it's it's a... Murderers Row, Rogues Gallery, Death Lineup, <laughs> use your particular terminology of exclusive titles to Sony. You know, Uncharted, Spider Man, God of War, Last of Us, um, even sports titles like MLB The Show. So, Sony has a lot going for them. Xbox doesn't really. They have the Halo franchise, which has faced scrutiny in recent years. And then, of course, um, Gears of War, which has kind of not been on the radar really the last few years. I don't see people many, many people talking about it, so you've got that to consider as well. Like I mentioned, Elder Scrolls Six was announced over two years ago. It is possible that this announcement means that something is going to be pushed along quicker. They may have been working on Elder Scrolls Six this whole time, and getting resources from Microsoft is going to allow them to push it over the edge and get the game out much quicker than people were realizing. Uh, again, Todd Howard, one of the f he pretty quickly after this was announced, did a press talking about it and mentioned Elder Scrolls specifically, getting fans hyped about it and potentially happening. And why talk about it? Why push this announcement if something's not happening? But if nothing else, the next point, most likely big titles are expected sooner then later, Microsoft obviously would like a big piece of the Elder Scrolls 6 pie that is going to be coming, and it's going to be a lot, barring a major, major catastrophic release by them. There's a lot of money to be made from it, whether it was an exclusive or it was, um, you know, going out to every single console and system like Skyrim was. Remakes or remasters of... Morrowind, Oblivion, um, could be the Fallout series.
people are talking about Fallout New Vegas 2 or a remaster of New Vegas. You know, that could be on the way. There could be remasters of other games under Zenimax's portfolio. Again, there's a lot. So that could be on the way. Like I said, Xbox, Microsoft in particular, they would definitely love to get a piece of that. Um, they've not been too picky as far as allowing games to go to other consoles, but it could happen. Um, possible worries that they do make a lot of these games exclusive to Xbox. Um, why would you not? If Sony is doing that with several of their properties, why would you not want to compete with that? Why would you not want to have a reason to come over to your console? Um, I saw in doing a research online, um, someone mentioned that the Xbox Game Pass is $10 a month. One of the things Microsoft and Xbox could do to really turn the tide in their favor is give these games to other platforms for the $60 or even $70 price tag, but say, hey, come on over to Xbox and play on the Game Pass for just $10 a month. You know, and you don't even have to purchase the the title. That's going to be a big, big boost for them as far as uh, players deciding where they want to play games. One of the other big worries that's kind of happening here is Microsoft pulled off a huge purchase of an independent gaming company. This is big. They've already been buying up studios and companies. And this is leading people to speculate that this precedent that Microsoft is setting could lead to them kind of becoming Disney. You know, Disney owns Marvel now. They own Star Wars. They own ESPN. They own many different big name companies. And it could end up being that this happens with Microsoft eventually buying up everybody. Or at the very least, it causes worry because if ZeniMax and Elder Scrolls and Bethesda are not off limits, who is off limits? And it could lead to Sony's PlayStation and Nintendo jumping into the fray and saying, hey, we're going to buy up properties too. Y'all ain't getting all of them. we got to have something to make money. So that kind of concern has been out there in the gaming world. One of the other worries is game, the games will become even more of a money scheme. In this era of you know microtransactions and un, uh, incomplete games that you have to purchase the DLC to continue, you know, EA's been pushing it, and even other companies have eventually caved into it. Microsoft did it with Halo, uh, or at least Xbox did it with Halo. Uh, Guardians was very much maligned and criticized by people because of the ridiculous price of microtransactions, in-game purchases, etc. Unfortunately, Bethesda is not uh, free of this themselves. Fallout 76 was much maligned for this. So... Who's to say that this doesn't happen to the Elder Scrolls franchise? One And one of the reasons they pushed Elder Scrolls Online so hard is because of the monthly gaming uh, subscription that they get from this from players and the in-game purchases for it. So there's a lot of worry there that that could happen with Elder Scrolls or Fallout even more. But hopefully they understand how the fans feel about this franchise Anyone who's familiar with Elder Scrolls will remember the paid mod fiasco that happened on Steam years ago where they tried to monetize it and the fans said, no, we have a strong community built on people being able to get these mods out to people and enjoy Skyrim. And it pushed the longevity of that game ahead several years. So hopefully Microsoft realized this and don't basically bastardize the game, for lack of a better word. So one of the thing, other things that people are worried about with Microsoft buying up so many franchises is uh, some of these said franchises becoming stale or obsolete. For example, you look at EA, they've bought up so many properties, and unfortunately what has happened is even a series is revered as Mass Effect, you know, and Ubis, uh, not Ubisoft, but uh, the company that made Mass Effect um, falling by the wayside or becoming lackluster, mediocre, a shell of them, their former selves, basically. And people are worried about that with Microsoft. They are they own so many companies and so many studios, and it's like, who kind of gets overlooked, you know, who kind of gets forgotten. And you wouldn't think Elder Scrolls could do that, but Elder Scrolls almost went under one time before. 
And if it could happen to Mass Effect, it could happen to anybody, basically. Uh, Fallout, you know. Um, and there's many titles recently that ZeniMax has tried to push out that didn't do so well. So there, there is a little bit of a worry there. But again, I think Microsoft is going to play this smart. You don't make a $7.6 bill, five, excuse me, billion dollar investment like that if you're not intending to use it and make sure it provides good quality that's going to keep the customer coming back. Kind of like final thoughts and predictions about this is while I am hopeful and it is slightly possible, probably no huge release during the launch of the new Xbox consoles or even during the holiday season. Uh, Elder Scrolls 6, there's been virtually no kind of update about it, about how far along it is or anything since it was announced two and a half years ago at E3. Starfield, they're working on it. That's all we know. And Fallout, they've been trying to, I guess, keep Fallout 76 as a thing, but is there going to be a Fallout 5? Is there going to be a New Vegas remaster or New Vegas 2? I haven't really seen anything about it, and I'm not the most studied up and I don't have the most expertise on this, but I've not seen anybody talking about it. Wishful thinking, but it's probably not going to happen that there's going to be a big title coming out, you know, this holiday year or for the launch, which kind of stinks because Xbox already doesn't have a lot to offer right now. PlayStation has a, a little bit, but, you know, um... Also, I predict that Xbox and PlayStation are going to be neck and neck still on sales. I don't think this is going to affect much. PlayStation and Xbox, they go at each other every single time a console is rumored to come out. The other one jumps in and says, hey, wait, we're here too. Um, and it doesn't seem to affect anything. You're going to see ebb and flow whenever... Xbox releases several of its big IPs, they're going to take a jump. And then when PlayStation releases Last of Us 3, Spider-Man 2, etc., um, they're going to jump up ahead. So, and Nintendo's going to be somewhere saying, hey, we're comfortable, leave us alone. <laughs> but you know, I don't think it's going to affect too much. Um, these games don't come out enough to really swing the tide, so to speak. And if anything, this just kind of evens the playing field as far as possible potential IPs for Xbox to be exclusive. But in reality, they probably won't. But, you know, Elder Scrolls Six that's another prediction. They're gonna, it's going to be a ginormous event, um, to no one's surprise. Unless it is a catastrophic failure, like I said, it's going to be huge. Um, and this is going to fuel the speculation about how good this game can be now that Microsoft is backing it with their money, tech, and resources, and now that Bethesda is going to be able to access it, and they're already promising an engine update and everything like that. Who knows how big it's going to be, how great and grand it's going to be. It's going to be a huge deal. You could see, talking about those exclusives, we've been talking about that a lot, you could see them trickling to Microsoft exclusive, um, becoming a Microsoft exclusive properties if they sell well, which I don't know if they will, but if they do, I think you'll start seeing that more and more from them. Microsoft is going to want to be competitive in the game with PlayStation, as I mentioned. Don't be surprised this year if a, a game or two is rushed out. Um, to take advantage of this huge undertaking of Microsoft owning Zenimax and Bethesda and these other companies that I mentioned. Don't be surprised. Um, it would suck if it was rushed out, you know, an in incomplete game or a game buggy and littered with problems, but, you know, while having this property, while launching a new console, while heading into the holiday season, um, you're going to want to take advantage of that. And if you don't have a game to show for it, it's like promising a car and there's no engine in it, you know, so you, you might see a, a big title from Microsoft coming out this year for, you know, under ZeniMax's wing, but I wouldn't count on it. And then lastly, um, just kind of a final thought, if you're interested in any of the games that could potentially be under them, 
the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, mentioned that they were going to be looking at each game as far as if it goes out to PlayStation, Nintendo, if anyone else jumps to the picture, they're going to look at it at a case-by-case basis to see if it stays with Xbox or PC or if it goes out to them. Um, if you already had your mind set on what console you wanted to get whenever the they're released eventually, you know, s- stick with that. If you don't know for sure what you're going to get yet, um, don't let this sway you. Wait and see what the announcement is as far as are these games going to be staying right here or if they're going to be, you know, going out. And, of course, a couple of these games could be a couple of years out, so don't don't ultimately base your buying decision on that. Um, stick with what you like. Stick with what you know. And if you desperately want to play a game, hopefully by the time it comes out, there'll be a sale on a console or something. So that does it for my video today about this big purchase and acquisition. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not an expert on these things, but I did research today while I was at work <laughs> um, preparing for this video talking about these things. It's a big deal to me. I'm a huge Elder Scrolls fan. I'm a big, um, I'd say casual gamer. I'm not extreme, but I and the wife love video games. You know, we play them. And uh, I wanted to get this video out because ASMR Nerd, who's one of my favorites, um, asked me to (laughs) show my thoughts, so I'm gonna do it. Um, If you enjoyed this video today, I would appreciate it if you check out the other videos on the channel. Um, I've got art videos, I've got a Pokemon video game playthrough going on right now. That's going to be the next upload on the channel. I've got uh, Funko Pops action figures. I've got role play videos now on here. And I'm looking to spread out eventually into traditional ASMR and a couple of other project ideas. And uh, trying to produce better and better content, you know, each video I make. And uh, so if you appreciate what you see here, or if you like what you see here, um, I'd appreciate any likes. You know, please subscribe if you want to see more. Comment and your thoughts here, what you think is going to happen um, with the gaming landscape as it's rapidly changing right now. And I uh, hope you're staying safe during these crazy times. Take care of yourself, your friends and family. Check up on, up on them. And I hope this video entertained you, relaxed you, and I uh, hope to see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.